said, my name is Jonathan York, and I'm the Response and Recovery Branch Director for Kansas Division of Emergency Management. And the Response and Recovery Branch is responsible for interfacing with local jurisdictions before, during, or after an incident or emergency occurs to um, facilitate state response and, and recovery support um, to augment local response and recovery actions. Uh, during um, SAST operations, those functions are shifted to the Emergency Operations Center and um, with our state emergency support function partners, as well as we have the capability to deploy regional coordinators um, to the field to provide technical assistance um, to county emergency managers during incidents. Hopefully everybody's uh, vividly aware with what emergency management is, but it's the organized analysis, planning, decision making, and assignment of available resources to mitigate against, prepare for, respond to, and recover from emergencies and disasters. It's an all hazards system. It allows all levels of government to respond to and recover from any emergency or incident that occurs. I'm sure that many Fire chiefs have familiar, been familiar with their emergency managers through their emergency operations plan updates and revisions, as well as any incidents that you may have that you've reached back to your county emergency managers for additional support. I'm at the state level, Kansas Division of Emergency Management, our agency is statutorily charged, and we're the lead state agency um, for coordinating the response and recovery um, to support local jurisdictions for the state. We're responsible for development and maintenance of the Kansas Response Plan. That spells out how the state will respond to and recover from um, any hazard. We're uh, also responsible for interfacing with all levels of government through that process, private industry, non-governmental organizations um, as well to, to assist with that. We coordinate with local, um, other state agencies and federal levels of government to provide that support to those jurisdictions um, when needed and coordinate damage assessments after an incident occurs to determine what, if any, federal disaster assistance may be available. Local emergency management programs, they're created by statute at the county level. Um, so each county across the state has an emergency manager that's responsible for coordinating those same functions that we would at the state. That's your inlet when you have an emergency um, occur and you need additional assistance. It, your emergency manager is the individual that you need to be reaching out to. They facilitate that multi-agency coordination with other external partners and support incident management so you're able to get the resources that you need um, to effectively manage the incident and get that incident under control and, and get it taken care of. So they also um, are responsible for facilitating and coordinating those um, disaster damage assessments within their own jurisdictions um, when we interface with them after um, an, an emergency occurs to determine what assistance may be needed um, they will reach out to those jurisdictions affected to receive damage assessments back from them so to walk through just incident response and um, when an incident occurs local response and those local resources deployed to that incident um, applied this to a fire scenario specifically, but this could be applied to any scenario. I just applied it to a fire scenario because that's specifically um, what we're looking at at today's, today's uh, workshop. So local fire resources deploy, and um, that incident commander um, probably is going to request immediate mutual aid, either through their own department or link back to a dispatch center to have that dispatcher um, request interjurisdictional mutual aid from the same county or from neighboring counties. Once that fire continues to grow or additional support is needed, the incident commander then can reach back out to the county emergency manager to assist with that coordination. Once the county emergency manager is notified, they can assess um, what additional needs there are. They can interface with uh, county commissioners if a local disaster declaration is needed. Um, they can assess the need to activate the emergency, their county emergency operations center, um, assess what emergency support function partners they need to call in to provide that support to incident management. They provide resource tracking, um, identify what resources are on the ground, tracking those resources, what additional resources um, may be needed, and how to get those resources. They also um, can facilitate public information 
and they can establish a joint information system, um, activate a joint information center, um, have the PIOs for the county and jurisdictions affected, um, coordinate that release of information um, through one system. As the incident would grow in complexity, the county emergency manager could contact our agency and, and, and um, identify what actions have been taken, um, identify what additional resource needs are, um, and, and request that additional support um, as, as needed. At KDEM, we would assess the, the need for a state disaster declaration from the governor and most likely activate our emergency operations center, the state emergency operations center, if the event is large enough that we, it would require us to have emergency support functions from state agencies come in to, to provide support. We activated for a wildfire, for instance, um, two, two agencies that we would definitely have in there would be the fire marshal's office and the state forest service because that, that is their area of expertise to provide us technical assistance um, and additional resource augmentation. At the state, we would activate our joint information center and our public affairs director who manages the joint information center um, would establish a joint information system with those public information officers at the county level and at the incident uh, command to ensure that one unified voice is, is being uh, spoken when information is being released to the public. We also, at the state level, are the link, is the linkage to receive federal support. So we interface with the Federal Emergency Management Agency and other federal agencies to augment local and state response and recovery actions as needed. talk a little bit about <laughs> incident notification guidelines. Um, county emergency managers, they establish those procedures for what incidents they want to be notified for and when they're notified. Counties have the, have the determination to, to make that themselves. They may want to be notified of any large wildfire. Um, they may not want to be notified of a wildfire until um, that gets to the point that you're requesting additional mutual aid locally or from neighboring counties. But it's important to, if you don't know what that process is, reach out to your county emergency manager to find out how they want to be notified and when they want to be notified. You know, are you contacting the county emergency manager directly? Is the county dispatch center or your, your local police department dispatch center, whoever you're going through, making notification to that county emergency manager? or are you contacting a duty officer within the county? So as I said, it's important to notify uh, the county emergency manager of incidents. They are the individual who facilitates that multi-agency coordination to support incident management. And they interface with county commissioners um, to determine if a local disaster declaration may be needed and activates the county emergency operations center to support um, those resources and those other needs for incident management. It allows the incident commander to focus solely on crisis management and allowing other individuals to coordinate those external resources and support, the ancillary support that they need. So when you report information to your, to your county emergency manager, just put some information that uh, would want to include to them. This helps them and get a better picture of what's going on. It's also information that we would ask that of them if they were called to report an incident um, to the state. So the location of the fire, um, the, the fire start uh, time, if you are aware of it when it started, um, the estimated size of the fire or number of acres that have been burnt, um, level of containment, oftentimes um, early into the fire, you're, you don't have much containment or you don't know what that level of containment is. But that helps us get a better understanding of if that fire is growing um, or if it has grown and you're able to get some level of containment back onto it, um, gives us a better I idea of, of what's actually occurring on the ground. Um, any communities or, or housing development areas that are affected, um, any areas that have been evacuated or that you're looking at evacuating um, in the immediate future. Uh, critical infrastructure threatened, um, and then any current resources that you have committed to firefighting or fire suppression efforts and then what your additional known resource needs are over the next 12 to 24 hours. That really gives them an idea of what they would need to stand up uh, 
for their emergency operations center, what additional support you might need from them, and in turn, what additional support they may need to be looking at requesting um, from the state if they're unable to fill those resource gaps. So when you look at what needing additional resources, we look at the capability needed. What is the gap that you need to have fulfilled? Not necessarily who you want to have fill that gap, but what is it that you need to have done? Um, any physical size or description, um, if capability is typed, for instance, um, the quantity needed, where that resource needs to report to, if you have a staging area established, um, where that resource needs to go once it's, once it's deployed. When that resource is needed, um, a point of contact for the resource request, if there are any additional questions um, that we may have or that your county emergency manager may have. Um, and then what actions have been taken um, up to that point in time to exhaust your local mutual, uh, mutual aid resources as well. So state assistance is requested through your county emergency manager. They make contact with Kansas Division of Emergency Management through our 24-hour emergency notification line that's staffed um, by our agency staff duty officer after hours. Um, if the emergency operations center is activated at the state, that number is automatically routed into our communication center um, and goes directly into our emergency operations center. There's five criteria to get state assistance. Um, first of all, we looked at if the resource capability exists within the affected county or region. Um, if mutual aid has been exhausted um, within its jurisdictional boundaries, if they've exhausted all mutual aid um, pursuant to local laws and state laws, and we'll talk about that a little bit in the next few slides. Um, if you've exhausted any contractor support, oftentimes contractor support may not be available, so that falls into that resource capability, just isn't available. And then to receive state assistance or federal assistance, there has to be a local disaster declaration. That can be verbal, or formal, uh, formally signed by the county commission. So we're able to take a verbal um, disaster declaration um, when we receive a request for assistance if the county commission hasn't, hasn't formally signed it. So one of the questions that we oftentimes get, and I know we've talked about this before at, at, at other conferences, um, emergency management conferences, as well as it's information is on our website. How can a jurisdiction obtain mutual aid resources if they don't have any pre-existing um, mutual aid agreements in place. Um, the legislature, uh, about 10 years ago, passed the Kansas Mutual Aid System Compact. Um, we developed the compact. The Division of Emergency Management was responsible for developing the policy and procedures to implement the mutual aid system. It allows for sharing of resources, personnel and equipment across jurisdictional boundaries once a, the affected county has declared a local disaster declaration. The compact addresses workers' compensation, tort liability, license reciprocity, and reimbursement if the assisting jurisdiction is seeking reimbursement. That's all outlined in the compact, um, as well as the resource request forms and the reimbursement forms, again, that are on our website. Um, it also, uh, those resources, um, any principal government official, mayor, county commissioner, for instance, are authorized representatives. The other authorized representative to request resources through the compact is the county emergency manager. So again, it's critical to contact your county emergency manager when you have an event um, and you think that you might be looking at needing outside resources because that's a part of the functions of emergency management is to support incident management. Additional information on the Kansas Mutual Aid System Compact or the Interstate Mutual Aid Compact uh, can be found on our division website. I have the website address at the bottom of that slide. So typical state resource requests that we've seen in the past or that we could uh, typically provide for a wildfire, I put some of those um, up here uh, for you to see. Um, of course, we can assist with facilitating mutual aid support. So if you haven't um, exhausted all mutual aid resources, but yet you need to have some assistance to facilitate that uh, mutual aid resource request, we can do that. We can do that through the statewide comprehensive resource management credentialing system and through our mass notification system to disseminate those um, requests to 
other county emergency managers or resource providers. Aerial fire reconnaissance or aerial fire suppression support. Um, incident management teams who could provide support to um, the incident commander to coordinate um, incident management functions, as well as emergency operations support teams that can assist county emergency managers um, robust their emergency operations centers um, if needed or relieve staff that they have um, simply because they may not have enough staffing to maintain 24-hour or prolonged um, emergency operations center activations. Communication support, um, the state has two communications on wheels assets that can be deployed to facilitate mutual aid and interlace those um, disparate radio systems, different radio systems so that all of those individuals who need to talk to one another have the ability to talk to one another from their radios um, and you're not having to utilize additional infrastructure. Those communications on wheels assets also have um, 80 portable radios that can be distributed to um, emergency responders as needed. I mean, if you have individuals coming in that don't have radios or if you um, need additional radios, those radios can be utilized to facilitate um, that support. Geospatial information system mapping support um, through the GIS response team um, can assist local jurisdictions if they need to robust their um, GIS mapping capabilities or if they don't have someone um, in the county that's able to come into their emergency operations center to fulfill that function. It really gives them a better idea of, of what areas are impacted, what areas could be impacted, critical infrastructure, for instance, um, in those areas to, to look at uh, what else may need to be evacuated um, or what the effects may be if those critical infrastructure as are impacted. Shelter support and technical assistance, not just for residents, but also for companion animals and pets. Um, generator support for critical infrastructure. And um, if the fire affects um, your <coughs> some of the power distribution facilities for communications towers, um, we've assisted counties locating generators um, to power their communications infrastructure so that they can continue to communicate with their public safety dispatch center and their emergency responders. And then volunteer and reception center assistance to coordinate that, that volunteer assistance coming in to assist the county.